Coming up next on Central Illinois World War II Stories, we'll feature an interview with Yukiko Okanaga Llewellyn of Champaign. There were signs posted on all the lampposts that said, you know, attention, Japanese, Japanese Americans, you are hereby commanded to be at, and then depending on where that poster was posted, you would be given a location. Ours was at Union Station. It was just my mother and me. Hayakawa Okinaga family is how we were listed in the records. The evacuation was, I think, two weeks' notice, and we were told that it was just what we could carry. We weren't told where we were going, how long we would be gone. You were even one-eighth Japanese. It included you. There were primarily students who protested and said, hey, I was born in the United States, I'm an American, what happened to due process? And they were promptly jailed. We were all Americans, but it didn't matter. I could see large families getting separated, but everyone had a number and a tag on. When you got on the train, uh, they pulled down all the blinds so that not only could you not see out, but of course people could not see in. Everyone was sent to an assembly center first. Interestingly, on the records of Manzanar, it said that my family and I arrived in June when we actually arrived in March. And that was because it was an assembly center from March until June, and then June 1, it became an internment camp. When we got there, barracks were still being built. They put to work all the able-bodied people who were internees to help build the barracks. We shared barracks with other people until the blocks were all formed and the barracks were done. The only thing I can compare it to is horse stalls. Those were kind of uh, the size of all of them. It's just that ours was never a horse stall. They were built. The bathrooms were located centrally, but there were no doors on the stalls. I remember that. And so people would take blankets and hold uh, blankets for their parents. So if you had to go in the middle of the night, you had to take your blanket holder with you. My mom um, hated that more than anything, the lack of privacy, the inhumaneness of being treated like that. Mess halls were social centers because that was when you actually could gather together. Uh, they didn't like people meeting, but they had to feed you. People were not eating the white bread and the beans. I guess our people just said, we would like to provide the cooks. Don't bring the white bread, bring sacks of rice, and we will start a garden. So the food was great after the initial introduction to army food, which we didn't like at all. But my mom and I were not very well to do in little Tokyo. So it was kind of a luxury to know that you were gonna get fed three times a day. I was in the elementary school and I have pictures to prove that I was there. The neat thing about camp to a kid is that you celebrated all the holidays uh, so we had Christian holidays, Jewish holidays, we had all the, the fun holidays for kids even though they weren't Christian, didn't matter. So we had Santa Claus, we had Easter Bunny. Teachers or whoever was incarcerated, they did have some Quakers who volunteered to come in and teach. And I would say there are a lot of uh, people who were in the camps who would do anything for the Quakers because they volunteered and we saw them a lot. We were encircled by barbed wire and there were guard posts with an armed guard uh, in the towers. There was a child 
who was shocked when there was a group of them trying to get outside the barbed wire. So of course all the children were told don't go anywhere near the barbed wire. The suicide rate among the older people was pretty high. They blamed themselves because they were the ones that were from Japan, brought the family over to the United States, and it was because of that that they were being uh, incarcerated. People started leaving camp if they had some place to go because on the records, uh, not only did they put down what day you left the camp, but where you went. My mother and I were by ourselves and we didn't have any family. So we were one of the last ones to leave. We left in October. And we went to Cleveland, Ohio, because there was a sponsor family there that said, we'll take those two people. Each family was given $25. You have to think in terms of how much that was in 1945, which wasn't a lot, but it wasn't piddly little either as it is today. We met uh, returning GIs on the public transportation. We were, generally speaking, treated fine. And I think it was because of our gender and age, but we were thrown off um, a train to leave room for soldiers. And I don't think the soldiers asked to have us thrown out. It was just that the people in charge thought that that would be a better use of their vehicle. The redress movement um, came to a head when it became really clear that our government should not have done this. There were people who lost everything, their family home, land. There's a, a wonderful song in South Pacific that you have to be taught how to hate. And the opposite is also true. If, if you celebrated all the holidays like we did and accepted them, nobody would be different. Careful the things you say, children will listen. Careful the things you do, children will see.